Modo 901 lets you more easily create compelling dynamic simulations and procedural effects with a number of new features and enhancements. A new procedural rock item allows you to quickly populate a landscape. You're able to procedurally edit the shape of the default rock with a variety of displacement, scale and orientation settings. And you can also use another mesh as an initial starting point. With the item meshed, it can then be replicated and included in the simulation. In response to user requests, a new procedural shatter item has been added to 901. It allows you to easily set up an object to shatter in your scene. Simply add the procedural shatter item to an object and run the simulation, and the object will automatically shatter based on its impact point when it hits another object. When the shattering occurs, a new material is generated for the internal surfaces. Geometry can also be duplicated within an item, and the procedural shatter will take that into account, treating each polygon island as a separate object. The shatter command itself has been improved so that it's much faster. But best of all, you can now use background geometry such as meshes, curves and point clouds to drive the shatter pattern. This allows you to more effectively art direct how an object is going to react to an impact. To complement the shattering improvements, 901 has a new constraint modifier. This allows you to glue the shards of a shattered object together in different configurations. The modifier is designed to give you clear visual feedback by drawing blue lines between shards to show where they're joined. Areas of the model can also be joined together by item name, grouped randomly, or constrained by the boundary of item groups. When the objects are then part of a simulation, they will break apart based on the group distribution and glue values. One particularly powerful feature of the constraint modifier is that it can be layered. For example, you can use one modifier to break or decay the constraints of another modifier and localize the result by using a falloff. This creates a workflow that is both procedural and art directable. A nice addition for rigid body dynamics is a stickiness channel. This makes items stick together after a collision. To speed up the process of working with particles, surface and source emitters, along with volume items, will now auto-wire to any item you have selected. In addition, a new collision emitter has been created for 901, which is much easier to set up. All you need to do is select the items that you want to emit particles from when they collide, Click the Emit on Collision button and everything will be wired up for you. 901 also has a new Particle Constraint modifier. This allows you to constrain an item to a specific particle in a particle source. This can be useful for finding the world position of specific particles in a simulation, or to get the particles of one simulation to interact with the particles of another. And finally, simulations calculated in Modo are now saveable as an external file, significantly reducing the file size of Modo scenes containing simulations. Also, doing a live simulation no longer destroys any cached simulation in your scene.